म्हणू शकतो दाखवून देतो त्याची कृपा त्याचे त्याची कृपा किती चांगली आहे खरोखर मी परमेश्वरचे उपकार मानतो ब्रदर जय शुक्रवार म्हणत होते की ही ही फोडण्याची परमेश्वराची ही फोडण्याची शाळा आहे पवित्र मंदिर आहे परमेश्वराची फोडण्याची शाळा आहे त्याच्या लेकरांसाठी आणि परमेश्वराची इच्छा आहे की त्याच्या लेकरांनी त्याच्या लेकरांना ते तयार करत आहे त्याचा तुम्ही परमेश्वरचे उपकार मानतो आपण ख्रिस्ताच्या प्रतिमेप्रमाणे बनावं म्हणून परमेश्वर जसं त्याला इच्छा असेल त्याप्रमाणे त्याने मला फोडावं आणि मला तयार करावं खरोखर मी परमेश्वरचे उपकार मानतो या मंडळीबद्दल मी एडस बद्दल देखील परमेश्वरचे उपकार मानतो Sunday morning, service that has blessed us with His presence here today. Uh, it's so wonderful to know that in this world of sin and woe, that His dear loving hand is on me. Hallelujah! It's so it's it's so it's a blessed assurance that the Lord will never leave His children. He will never forsake His children, as His word says that I will never never leave you, never forsake you. And God's good. And he's not only good; he's faithful. He's not just faithful; he's just. He's not just just; he's loving. Oh, and he's kind, and he's gracious. No matter what we say, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if only we understand how great God is, our hearts will rejoice. It is it's it's very important things to understand in the present evil generation, evil world that we are living in, that God still has the control of everything in His creation. Nothing in this creation, nothing in His creation, uh, 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 goes out of His sight. The Scripture says, "Behold, all things are naked uh, to His eyes." He He sees everything. He He controls everything. He is in charge of everything. and there are things that he expects from us uh, just like a small child that uh, trusts their uh, trust his parents if the uh, if the ch- if the child knows that my if my father picks me up that my father will never drop me down and the child willingly stretch, stretches forth his hands and asks his father to pick him up why because the child knows that there is love there is security in that arms that i'm i'm reaching out to us and if we know our father we will stretch forth our hands to him and ask him to pick us up in his arms because there is love there there is security there there is assurance there there is there is so much of peace that passes all human understanding every need supply whether it's healing whether it's cleansing of our mind cleansing of our spirits or whether it's that deep peace inside peace we don't need peace when we are on the mountain We need peace when we are in the valley. We need peace when we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We need the peace that time. And since if only I know some of us have experienced the peace that passes all understanding when we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, that none, nothing touches us because God is with us. And and we need to be a little more, a little more faithful. to the lord in these last days uh, we need to be a little more on zeal for the work of the lord uh, we need to be a little more uh, we need to give the law the work of the lord a little more preference uh, because we still have a mindset that it's okay uh, if i go to church uh, once a month or twice a month or maybe once a week i'm not saying Uh, to be here on Wednesday and Fridays for those who are working, and the crazy traffic that we have here is not easy to, to 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 just go to and fro from one end of the city to the other. But but Sunday is a day when we all, when we all can walk in the house of the Lord. We all can. Saints, if only we realize what God has done for us, and what God is still doing for us, in spite of our unfaithfulness, He's always been faithful. Can we say an amen to that? Amen. In spite of our unfaithfulness, we all can make that statement. None of us here can say God has not given me what I deserve. But we all have got more than what we deserve in terms of good things, in terms of the blessings. And I, I thank God for His amazing grace. I thank God for His His faithfulness. 
and thank God that He's always been so faithful to us in spite of our of our unbelief and our uh, and our uh, and our unfaithfulness. It's so wonderful to know that God is still the same, and He still loves His children. He still cares for His children. He still works for His children. For to, 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 for our good, for the scripture says, for all things work together for good to them that love God. And and sometimes we fall, sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes we get into a different mindset. And I'm going to talk to you about three mindsets today that are dangerous, or three deadly mindsets that we can come in, or three deadly mistakes that we can do. Uh, that will just take us away from the Lord slowly and steadily. It's, it's like a seducing spirit that will just enter into our minds, enter into our hearts, and just take us away, draw us away from that simplicity, as Paul said, I, Paul said, I fear, lest by any means the devil will beguile you as he beguiled Eve from the simplicity that's in Christ. It's very dangerous and sometimes we fail. I'm not saying it's bad to fail because we learn from our failures more than from our successes. We learn from our, we learn more when we fall than when we are, when we are standing. We learn more through the valley than when we are on the mountain. And failures many times teach us very valuable lessons in life. And some of the valuable lessons I have learned in life is after the mistakes I have committed. Because these are called life lessons. But some of the mistakes can be lethal. Some of the mistakes can be dangerous. Some of the mistakes can draw us away from the truth. And we won't even know that we've been swayed away by the, by, by the mindset that we had. We've been drawn away. We'll, we'll be in church, we'll be in services, but we won't have the relationship with God the way we had that relationship years ago. We can be in church and still backslide. We can be in church and still be outside of the church. That some of us are present here physically, but mentally we are somewhere else, right now. Right? Right now. Our eyes, your eyes is focused on me, but your mind is somewhere else. I'm not saying that that's a sin. I'm saying that's what happens when we continue to focus on the things of this world and the things that this world offers that our sight when it moves we won't even know once upon a time we were looking at Jesus but little by little that focus has moved and someone else has become my Jesus now and that someone or something else may not be sin I'm not saying from from looking at Jesus today you look at, you look at adultery tomorrow no it's not adultery I'm not talking about that gross sins that we commit I'm talking about the little little acts of unbelief and the little acts of, of, of disobedience. Oh, it's okay. A very dangerous attitude we can have is an okay attitude. It's okay. It's okay if I miss one service. It's okay if I don't go to church today. It's okay if I don't go for the prayer meeting today. It's okay. I'm telling you, it's not okay. Because God will make a statement one day, say, it's okay if I don't take you in the kingdom. See, it's, it's, it's not a what you say, it's truth is absolute. There's no deviate, there's no, there are not two truths. There's one absolute truth. Truth is absolute means truth is complete. There are no conditions imposed on the truth. This is the truth and there are no conditions imposed on the word of God. Whatever the word of God says is true. And if Jesus said, I am the way, that means he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. We, there's no other way, Peter said. There's no other way whether it be on, on heaven or on earth whereby man can be saved. Even then, we find various ways to get to heaven. Oh, it's okay what God we serve, we all are going to the same place. No, my friend, we all are not going to the same place. If you want to go from here to the U.S., it's okay whatever flight you, you take. I wish U.S. No, my friend, you might land up in Australia. 
Oh, but I was in the airport, so what? Everyone's in church, everyone's on the airport. It's very important what flight you are on. It's very important what, what, what vestibule you are in. And I would like to, like to talk to you about three mindsets today. That, will, that, that are lethal and dangerous. That might take us away from God or from our, from our relationship with God. And the first thing is trusting in our good works. Thinking that living a moral life is enough. I don't need God. As long as I'm good. As long as I obey all the rules and the regulations. It's okay if I keep all the Ten Commandments. Because that's what people know. They think there are only Ten Commandments that we need to keep. But they don't know they are breaking the first two, three commandments. The very first commandment, thou shalt, I am the Lord thy God and thou shalt not have any other gods before me. That's the very commandment they break when they don't obey the word of God. Because there's someone else has become their God. The world has become their God. The friends have become their God. Their job have, has become their God. So, so, so it's okay if I live a good moral life. Good work is important. I'm not saying good works are not important. I'm not saying we need to live an immoral life. I'm not saying we need to break the traffic lights as, 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 as 90% of the people break. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we need, to, we need to hold our taxes. No, we have to do all those things. We have to live a good moral life. We have to be faithful to the Lord. Jesus said and faithful to Caesar also. Give to the Lord what belongs to the Lord and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Don't rob your taxes. Don't jump on the traffic lights. Obey the, the ones that, are, uh, that, 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 that govern, govern us in the government also. I'm not saying that. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is good works alone cannot put us in the kingdom of God. We need to have a relationship with Christ. Trust, because trusting in our own righteousness is very dangerous. And this mistake, this mindset can get into mature Christians. After serving the Lord for a quite number of years, we think now we have cut out with God. Now God, now, now I'm a senior in the Lord. I've been in the church for 20 years, 30 years. I've been faithful to the church. I've been faithful in my tithes. I play in the band. Uh, I come to church every service. So the Lord's happy with me because I do all these things. That's one mindset that we can have for the people who are in the church. Who have served, I'm, I'm serving the Lord for a number of years. People think it's just enough to be morally upright and a good person. I'm telling you, you find good Hindus and good Muslims and good Buddhists. Their life will put our life to shame. Because they live so good moral lives. But is, is living a morally upright life just is, 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 is just that important? That you don't need God. Just because of the good works that I am doing, is God happy with me? Is, just important, is God pleased with the works that I have done? Or is God pleased with the work that Christ has already done for me? See, that's why Christianity is different from every other religion. Every other religion is man's attempt to reach to God. Christianity is God's attempt to reach to man. That, that turns the tables upside down. It turns the tables around. Because it's not us who reached out to God. It was God who reached down to us. Because we in our fallen nature cannot reach up to God. But God had to reach down to us. He had to humble himself. Take upon himself a nature of a servant. Uh, uh, he, was, he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Dwelt among us. And paid the price. And redeemed us from the slavery of sin. See that's, that's God's attempt to reach to us. Let's not just think that it's, it's okay if I live a good morally upright life. And this mindset can invade our life and, 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 uh, uh, and it can be very dangerous. But I want to tell you in Isaiah the 64th chapter, that's what 
It's very important that we be in Christ. It's not just important to, 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 to take his name from our mouths, but it's very important to be in Christ. Uh, here in Isaiah the 60, 64th chapter, let's turn to few scriptures. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Let me show that what God, what does God think about our righteousness, our good works. It says in verse 6, but we, we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness, righteousness means all our good works, our morally upright life, whatever we do, all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. This, this, this verse talks about our, our righteousness. When God looks at our deeds, what he can see is nothing but filthy rags. Filthy rags. Here Matthew 7, isn't it Matthew the 7th chapter? That talks about Jesus and many shall come to me in that day. Matthew 7, uh, 32, 33. If you can find the scripture, put it up on the monitor. It says, many shall come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, look at our good works. Look at how much devils I have cast out in your name. Look at how many churches I have built in your name. Look at the orphanages I have built in your name. Look at the schools that we have built in your name. Look at the healings and the miracles and the prophecies that we have prophesied in your name. We did it all in your name. We never did anything without taking your name. We always did it under the, under the, under the, under the premise of Jesus. You know, our church was called the body of Jesus. Christ church, whatever church. We sang songs pertaining to Jesus. These were all the good works that man will show to God in the last days. Matthew, Matthew 7, 7 21, 21, verse 21, 22. Verse 22, many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied, in the name cast out devils, they have done many wonderful works. But what did Jesus say? What is Jesus' answer? Well done. Thank you for living a good life. Thank you for doing all these good works. I am so proud of you. Jesus says to them, I never knew you. Is it possible to do to, to do to do the to do the work of the Lord and still the Lord not knowing us? It's very much possible. The scripture proves it. We can spend our life thinking that we are working for the Lord. And what we do, God is happy with us. But there is coming a day, saints, when every man's work will be judged. Every man's work will be tried by fire. Will my work stand? Or will my work be burnt as wood, hay and stone? Or will my work stand as gold, silver and precious stone? Only the works that Christ will work in me will stand as gold, silver and precious stones. All my work will be as wood, hay and stubble which will be burnt. Paul said in Romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Again the scripture says there is no one good. There is no good. No, not one. No, not one means no, not one. For all have sinned. None of us can say that we are righteous. That's what the people in the law in the Old Testament did. For about 1,500 years, they, they tried to prove their righteousness by obeying the law. But every time they tried to do that, they fell on their face. Because when Christ came, he came into a world where, where God was not happy with those people. He was upset. God was not happy with what, what, what people thought they were doing as religion. That's why Jesus had to institute his own church outside of religion. Martin Luther, the great reformer, said, The most damnable and pernicious heresy that has ever plagued the mind of man is the idea that somehow he can make himself good enough to live with an all-holy God. We can't make ourselves good saints. We can't make ourselves worthy. God makes us worthy. We can't, we can't make ourselves good in the sight of the Lord. 
But there is a route to reach that through the blood of Christ. Through the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2. Here Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. And the second chapter, he is talking to them about the same thing. Here in Ephesians and chapter 2, verse 8. He says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. This is God's truth. And this is an absolute truth. There is no other way. This doctrine launched the Protestant Reformation some 505, 510 years ago. It's not how many prayers we recite. It's not how many our fathers we say. It's not how much charity we do. None of this will be enough to bring us into a right standing with God. I'm, say, I'm not saying there is no place for good works. There is a place for good works. But good works is not the, 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 the source that saves me. Or good work is not, not, not the reason why I'm saved. Good works is the result of me being saved. See, I don't do good works because I want to be saved. I do good works because I'm already saved. I don't do good works because I want to be saved. I do good works because I want to prove my salvation. That yes, I am saved. And now I do good works, not to get into God's good books, but I am doing those good works because I am already in God's good books. He's already written my name in the Lamb's book of life. Those names were written even before the foundation of this world. And now I prove my salvation by the good things that I do. Those good things don't save me. Those good things show that I am already saved. That's what, that's what they say in Latin. It's sola gratia and sola fide and sola Christos. It's only grace, only faith, only Christ. That's what we need to keep in our hearts. And then he says in verse 9, Ephesians 2, 2 verse 9, not of works. Again, these are good works. Not of good works, lest any man should boast. No. Good works makes us to boast, isn't it? We all have boasted about our good works, sometime or the other. We still do it before men. Sometimes we still do it when we stand up and testify. I did so much for God. We may sound humble, but our heart is lifted with pride when we think that we have done some good work. Because man always boasts because of the work that he has done. It's, but Paul said, not of works, that any man should boast. God doesn't love me because of my good works. He loves me because Jesus died for me. Romans chapter 8. Keep your fingers in, finger in Ephesians 2. We'll come back there. But in here in uh, Romans and chapter 8. It says in verse 1. Now therefore there is, now, there is therefore now no condemnation. And people just quote this part of the scripture and say, there's no condemnation because you accepted Christ as your savior. Now there's no condemnation after Jesus died for you. Oh, your savior will be in heaven today if you die. But they don't read the remainder of the verse which says, there is no condemnation to them, to them which are in Christ. In Christ. That means I am not dependent on me, on my works, but I am completely dependent on what Christ has done for me. I, I, I rest in His works. That's why it's called the Lord of the Sabbath, He's the Lord of the rest. I, I rest in Christ. I am abiding in Christ. Jesus said, without me, you cannot do anything. Without me, you can do Nothing, unless you abide in me, Christ said in John 15, unless you abide in me, you cannot do anything. And Paul says to those people who abide in Christ, no one can condemn them. Even the devil can't condemn them. Because of the grace of God now, I can reach in Christ. And because, of, because I am in Christ, there is peace and joy 
and strength. And, 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 and there, is, there, is a, there is a grace that's upon my life. That grace is not a license to sin now. That grace is the power to change. Many people take grace and, 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 and continue in their life of sin. Paul said, should we abound in grace so that, uh, should we abide in grace so that sin may abound? God forbid, he said. Because grace is not a license for me to live the way I want. Grace is the power to live like Christ. That's what grace is. And there's a vast difference between being in Christ and being in Adam. We all are born in Adam. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you are born again. Nicodemus said, how can I go back into my mother's womb? I'm a big man now. Jesus said, I'm not talking about a physical birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. We all are born in Adam. But one day, we have to be born in Christ. That's a new birth. That's a born again experience. And that's called salvation. That doesn't happen when I join a church. That happens when I sit at the altar, when I knee at the altar, and I feel the burden of sin rolled away from my heart. And then I, when I get up from the altar, I'm so refreshed. And I feel light. And I, I, and I really, really accept Christ and what He's done for me. On Calvary. See here in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Let us look at some of the scriptures about about being in Christ. First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse twenty-two. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse twenty-two. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. There are two th two 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 group of people there. Some are in Adam, some are in Christ. So he said, in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Turn a few pages on your right and come to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Jesus and the Father will only associate with those people who are in Christ. They will only associate with new people. And it says, Paul says that again in Ephesians chapter 2. Let's come back to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse, let me read from verse 13. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. See, our works didn't bring us closer to God. Christ's work, the works that Christ did, the life that Christ lived, the grace that Christ now provides brings me closer to God. It's not because of my good works. If you keep reading those verses down from verse 14, right up to verse 19, it just shows us that how we were, we were away, there was a middle wall of partition that God broke. I couldn't break, man couldn't break that middle wall of partition that separated God and man. Christ broke it through his death. And now because Christ broke it, I have an access to the Holy of the Holies. I can call him Abba and Father. I cannot, I just don't call him God now, I call him Father. When, G, when the disciples told Jesus, teach us to pray, he didn't say you shall pray like this, Lord, Lord, or God, God. He says, this is the way you, you shall pray, our Father. There was a relationship that was, that was, that was, uh, that was, that was uh, fixed on the cross. The relationship that was severed in the garden was joined once again at Jesus' death on Calvary. Now we were not in Adam, now we were in Christ. So let's not just rely on our good works. I don't want to belabor this point a lot. The second dangerous mindset is waiting until it's too late. We wait we wait, but if you wait, it, it might be too late. Oh, let me settle down in life first. Let me find a good job first. Then I'll come to church. Let me, let me settle in my professional life. And then I'll serve God. There is no halfway covenant. You either are in the ark, or you either are outside of the ark. You can keep your one feet in the ark and one feet in the world. We are either in Christ or we are still in Adam. 
see here there are uh, some people think there's plenty of time since no one knows how much time they have let's turn to the gospel of luke and chapter 12 the gospel of luke and chapter 12 verse 16 now jesus speaks a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this will i do i will pull down my barns and build greater and then will i bestow all my fruit and my goods now now he was a very busy man he had a big business he maybe was one of the richest man that lived in that city and he built a big business empire for himself but he did not have time for God he did not have time to go to church and verse 19 says I will say to my soul he spoke to his soul his really there was no one that he had even to speak so he he screamed himself and he said soul thou hast much goods laid up for many years now here he, he, he thinks at the age of 45 he's, he's met his retirement target now he can enjoy life many of my friends used to tell me oh I'll work till 50 I'll just get a lot of wealth and then I'll retire some of them died in Covid my age some of them are, are living today without their wives divorced because they didn't have time to go home they were, they were married to their office some of them some of their children hate them because daddy was never home let me settle down first then I'll sit and talk to my son your son will not look at your face. Let me first settle down in life. Then I'll give time to my wife. Your wife will leave you and go. Because you didn't have time for her. Let me settle down and then I'll start going to church. You might die before you settle down. Oh, there's plenty of time. Let's see what God says. Verse 20. But God said to him, Thou fool. Thou fool. Put your name there in your mind when you're reading the scripture. This night, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall be these things which thou hast provided? God says, You fool, you'll be dead tonight. This man thought he had everything worked out. This man thought he, 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 he was on target. His life was going as planned. But he was not making the Lord his priority. He thought one day I start going to church. One day I'll go and meet my family. One day I will get things right with my brother or my sister who is not talking to me for many years. One day I will meet my old parents who live alone. Now I am very busy. First let me settle down and one day I take my parents out with me for a drive. Jesus said, you fool, that one day will never come. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. It says, for he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, behold, he says, now is the accepted time. You want to get things right with your brother and sister? Today is the time. You want to start going to church? 
Today is the accepted time. You want to start serving the Lord? Today is the accepted time. You want to give time to your parents? Today is the accepted time. You want to give time for your family? Today is the accepted time. He says, today is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Today. Don't keep that decision pending for tomorrow. We might not see tomorrow, saints. Some of us might not reach tomorrow. Today is a day of salvation. The Lord said in Isaiah, doesn't he say in Isaiah, come now. He uses the word now. Come now and let us reason together. The Lord is waiting. He's waiting for us. Come now. We get so easily distracted saying some of these little things. We think spending time in the church is a very little thing. It's okay if I miss one service. We think spending time with my children at home, with my wife or husband at home is a very little thing. It's okay if I don't give them priority now for this year, maybe next year onwards. We get snared so easily by sin. Hebrews 12, Therefore we are compelled by such great a cloud of witnesses. Then he says in the next verse, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our salvation. Look unto Jesus. Don't look unto what I have built for myself. Don't just keep looking unto your bank balance. Don't just keep looking unto your property that you have amassed. Don't just keep looking unto the business or the degrees that you have behind your name. Look unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of my faith, of my salvation, and of my life. We are looking at the wrong things. We are looking at the wrong people. Paul said in Philippians 3, isn't it? That forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward. What, where, where am I pressing towards? And I press him towards so that I can get my name on the Forbes list up to the top 10 influential people in, the, in, in India. What am I pressing towards? He says, I'm pressing towards the prize for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's my pressing forward. That's where I'm pressing forward to. Amen. Because Paul said again, the things which we see with our eyes are temporal, but the things which we do not see are eternal. Let's not give up the eternal for the temporal. Everything that we will get in this world is temporal. But the things that we will receive from God are eternal. There was no plan B for Paul. Oh, if I fail as a minister, then I will go here. Oh, if, the, if this church doesn't work out, then I'll go back to my secular job. Then I'll do the, my business. There was no plan B for Paul. Paul, for Paul to live was Christ, to die was Christ. He said, this is what I do, this is what I do, die, till I die. He says, I'm pressing forward, I'll keep pressing forward. Sometimes I'm in the mark. Sometimes I may fall, sometimes I may get hurt, sometimes I may sit down because my legs hurting, but I'll get up by the grace of God in Christ Jesus and I'll start running the race again. Because I don't want to wait. He says, redeeming the time. Redeem the time because we don't have much time left. We, we, we need to get our minds right. We need to have our minds transformed. That's why it says, I beseech you, brother, he, he says, I'm begging you, you people, let's be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove Amen. what is good and holy and acceptable, the will of God. And he says, don't be conformed to this world, so, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's have a changed mindset today. Let's have a vision that the Lord wants us to have. If you don't have this mindset, I pray that the Lord reveals this mindset to you today. I pray that we go back with our eyes of understanding illuminated today. I pray that we focus on the vision that is that the Lord has set before us. Says, as the scripture says in Habakkuk, then read that vision. Though it may tarry, wait for it. Wait, 
Don't leave. Don't give up. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass. Let's not wait on the other side. Let's wait on God's side. Let's not wait to serve the Lord. Let's continue to serve the Lord. She says, as I said, something may not look sinful. But they are dangerous. Because they can take you away from the God. It's not, it, uh, it's, it's not the big, big giants that spoil the field. The scripture somewhere says, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. The small foxes, which you can't even see, that creep in your vineyard, and they don't even know they're eating the grapes because before the grapes mature and before the grapes ripe. And when 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 the when the uh, when the gardener walks in his vineyard, he sees all the grapes are eaten because he didn't even know a fox was there. We can see the big giants of sin. We may not. Steal, we may not kill, we may not commit adultery. Those are big giants of sin. What about the little foxes? That spoil the vine. The little foxes of procrastination. Procrastination that put off today's work for tomorrow. It's okay. I'll wait for tomorrow. I'll wait for, for a week more. It's, 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 it's dangerous things to, to wait to start do, working for the Lord. Some of, some of us may think, oh, it's not dangerous to miss church sometimes. See, these are the little foxes. We need to deal with these little foxes. Before, before, we, before we, we are swayed away by, the, by them, before we, before we find out the vineyard, there's nothing left, but only leads. All the grapes have been eaten up. We need, to look, we need to look at those little foxes in our lives that's keeping us from bearing the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is not maturing in our life because, because the little foxes are chewing on those fruit. Don't wait to deal with those little foxes. Deal with them right now. Deal with them today. Let's, he says, let's lay aside, Paul says, let's lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us. And then let's run this race with patience, the race that is set before us. So let's not wait, saints. The third thing is, the third mindset is giving up. Giving up the fight. Giving up the good fight of faith. We think, oh, it's nothing, I, I can't see anything happening in my life now. I've been serving the Lord for so long. I've been going to the church so faithfully. And I've been working for the Lord for so long. But I can't see any fruit. I can't see anything. There's nothing good happening in my life. And people give up. Never give up. God told to the prophet to, to King Asa here in 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. And verse 7. He says, be you strong therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Don't give up, he says. Don't give up. Let not your hands, hands, hands become weak. Your work, your work will be rewarded. You will be rewarded if you do the right thing. So many times, so many people get so close to success, and just before the last step, they give up. Just move the last step. It was just one step more and they would have succeeded. But they just give up on the last step. And whatever the reason may be, they just quit. <clears throat> and some of us quit serving God. No reason is good enough for you to quit serving God. No reason. I don't, I don't care how, how strong that reason is. But no reason is good enough to give up on God. You know the Israelites were right on the edge of the, of the promised land. And they sent how many spies? Twelve spies to spy the land. 
And Moses said, go, spy the land for 40 days. And those 12 spies spied the land. And they came, up, came with the report. Ten of them said, those giants are huge. The land is good. No doubt the land is good, flowing with milk and honey. The grape, the cluster of grapes are bigger than us. It's indeed a land which flows from, uh, that flows with milk and honey. But there are giants there. We won't be able to win against them. But only two said, we will still be able to win against them. Those dead people forgot what the Lord did for them in Egypt. Two years back. Eighteen months back. Those ten forgot how the Lord divided the Red Sea and drowned the army of Pharaoh in the Red Sea. Those ten people forgot the plagues that God rained down from heaven. And how they were protected in the land of Goshen. Those ten people forgot. But those two said, let's go in and possess the land. The Lord is good enough and strong enough to give us that land. But they said, no. They spied for 40 days. And they came back with a no. And now God took them for 40 years. One day for a year. They were right there on the edge of the promised land. One more step and they would have entered the promised land. But no. They gave up. They gave up the fight and then God had to take them round again. And that generation died in the wilderness. That generation died. Since if we give up, we will die lost. There is security in staying close to God. Even though we may not see our prayers and saints, I want to urge you, keep, keep being faithful. Some prayers will not be answered. And I tell you always, some prayers will never be answered in your lifetime. But maybe in the kingdom, you'll see the answers of those prayers. Let's not give up the fight. Paul said here in Hebrews chapter 10, he says that, that cast not your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward, verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence. He says, don't give up. Verse 36 for you need a little more patience. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. Don't give up. And then let's not feel that it's too late for me to come back again. If we have given up, if some of us have given up spiritually, and you may be sitting here doubting God today, I'm telling you it's not late to come back. And, I'm t I, 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 and even I pray for my friends that have left this good way. It's not late for even them to come back. And we need to pray for them who have left this good way and who are out there in the world. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters. God has to put that burden on our hearts where we pray for them because it's not late. As long as they're alive, there is hope. There is hope. And we continue to pray for them. Because there's a parable here in Luke, the 13th chapter. Let me close with this. Luke chapter 13. Look at this parable. I think it's just three words. Just three verses in this parable. Luke 13. And it says, is it Luke 13? Luke 13 verse 6. Four verses. Luke 13 verse 6. And he spoke also this parable. A certain man a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard. Behold these three years I have come seeking fruit on the fig tree. And I am not finding any fruit. Cut it down. Why cumber it the ground? Why is it occupying space here? Why is it occupying space in my vineyard? Just cut it out and throw them. But the, but the dresser answers and says, Lord, give it one more year. Leave it there for this year till I shall dig about it and dung it or fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well, but if it doesn't bear fruit, then you cut it down. That 
वंडरफुल इज विद ड्रेस ऑन जिनसे आई खटे जाओ इज इट इट अमेजिंग the jesus as the dress of the vineyard doesn't say i'll get i'll i'll take this person out of the church he says father if you want you take him you brought me to him you take him away from me. but we we start putting our judgment on people who are saved and who are not saved and we think who is eligible to sit here and who is eligible not to sit here and we make the choice who shall come to church and who will not come to church and we make a choice that how much better i am than the other person there but the dresser says give it one more year this parable has to do with israel and how jesus came to israel 2000 years ago he saw the vineyard there he saw the fig tree it, it, it was a vineyard dresser but i believe it was a fig tree it was not a it was not a grape uh, yes it was a fig tree he saw the fig tree but there were no fruit there were people who were religious but were lost there were people who were doing thinking that they are serving god but they were nowhere close to the lord and let's look at this parable a little different it is the keeper the dresser of that of that vineyard says give me one more chance this tree has stopped producing fruit i know but give me one more chance and you know since trees can do that sometimes sometimes the trees are ruined by the storms sometimes even pollution can cause a tree to stop bearing fruit most often it is because of a disease or a drought that the tree stop producing fruits so sometimes fruit bearing trees don't produce fruit because they are damaged they are hurt there are some people that may be sitting here today that may be hurt that may be damaged because of the storms that they are going through in their lives There may be some people that have left this church that may be hurt, that may be damaged because of the pollution, because of the hurt, because of the scourge, because of of of, of the storms that they faced. I don't know how I can reach out to them. But all, all I want to say is, God's not given up on you. and God has not given up on them either let's be as this vineyard dresser and let's tell God God give them one more year give them one more chance of God give them one more chance i dig around them amen praise the lord let's dig around them with our prayers amen let's dig around them let's fertilize them and God will let the spirit the water of life once again touch their roots Amen. and those trees which have stopped bearing fruit we start bearing fruit once again Amen. and that can happen says that can happen let's not give up on our prayers let's not give up on those people that have left the church let's start digging around them with our prayers and let god give the increase for paul water and Paul labored and Apollos water but it was God who gave the increase let us labor in our prayers let us meet them if we can let us talk to them let us speak to them words of comfort and words of encouragement and let us dig around them with our prayers and one day God will let the spirit and the water of life touch them and touch their roots and they will once again be in the house of the Lord as the scripture says somewhere in Ezekiel that I am the Lord I will plant them in my house I will bring them again and I will plant them in my house says let's not give up on God let's not give up on our brothers and sisters who have left from this place let's reach out to them in love because they also know heart in heart that this is where they belong but something is keeping them from walking in the vineyard since i'm telling you you all belong here don't ever think god is done with you no as long as you are alive there is hope if you have backslid in your heart come back to the lord today don't leave this place unless the lord touches your heart and gives you a renewing of the spirit 
Let's not leave this place unless God burns the fire again on the altar of our souls today. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all pray. I think God needs to touch some hearts that are here today. That God needs to give them. परमेश्वर शुभकाश्ति कर हाथ का जो सन्देश होता तो फार महत्व तीन ही मुद्दे जॉइनी अपने ते फार महत्वाचे आणि जर आज आपण बघितलं तर त्या मह त्या मुद्द्यावर आपण लक्ष देऊया आणि विचार करूया खरोखर या मुद्द्यामध्ये मी कुठं बसतो का आणि परमेश्वर आपल्याला मदत करेल कारण परमेश्वराला माहिती आहे की आपण त्याची देखरे आहोत आणि त्याची इच्छा नाही की आपण कुठेतरी लांब जावं कारण यशियामध्ये एक वचन दिलेलं आहे की माझं इच्छा नाही की तुम्ही तुमच्यावर संकट यावं किंवा तुम्ही मरावं नाही तुम्ही नष्ट व्हावं नो त्याच्या इच्छेत नाही आहे त्याच्या इच्छेत आपण सगळीकडं उत्कर्ष पाहावं त्याच्या इच्छेत भरभराट पाहावं सगळं पा सगळ्यांच्या आशीर्वादांनी परिपूर्ण आहो ही त्याची इच्छा आहे म्हणून ते हे आपल्याला हात झाडा मिळत असतो हा एक वचन मिळत असतात तर आपण हे वचन घेऊया आपल्या आयुष्यात हे लावूया आणि पहिला मुद्दा जो ब्रदर जॉईनी सांगितलं की आपल्या स्वतःच्या कामगिरीवर स्वतःच्या कर्मावर आपण जास्त विश्वास ठेवू नये हो मी असं केलं मी तसं केलं मी असं केलं मी खूप पैसे दिले मी खूप लोकांची मदत केली मी खूप असं असं हे बांधलं किंवा काय त्या आपल्याला माहिती आहे की असे हुशार का मारणाऱ्या खूप लोक असतात आणि ते त्याच्यावर फार विश्वास ठेवतात पण ते येशू क्रिस्तांनी काय म्हटलं ते सगळं आहे पण मी तुम्हाला ओळखणार नाही कारण माझ्या बाबतीत तुम्ही काय केले मला तुम्ही अंगीकारले का माझा आत्मा तुमच्यामध्ये आहे का मी जे सांगतो ते तुम्ही करता का ते फार महत्वाचे कारण आपल्याला या चर्चमध्ये सर्व शिकवण मिळत आहे की आपण काय करायला पाहिजे सर्वात महत्वाचा मुद्दा म्हणजे आपण त्याची आज्ञा पाळायला पाहिजे त्याच्याशी विश्वासू असायला पाहिजे आणि हे जर आपण केलं तर आपल्याला फार मोठा फायदा मिळणार आणि आपल्याला माहिती आहे की परमेश्वर नेहमी त्याच्या लेखांबरोबर असतो तर आपण स्वतःवर पुशार की मारू नये स्वतःवर हे कर आपल्याला माहिती आहे की ते वचन आहे की आपण काय लेट अस नॉट बोस्ट ऑन आवर वर्क नाही प्रेम आपल्या कर्मावर आपण कधीही पुशार की मारू नये तर आपण इथं नम्र आणि लिन तुम्ही त्या मागच्या रविवारचा जो संदेश आहे त्याच्यावर तुम्ही हे ह्याला जोडून तुम्ही हा लेसन पुढे घ्या आणि समजा तुम्ही समजून घ्या की किती परमेश्वर आपल्याला ह्याच्यात मदत करणार तर आपण एक वचन मी तुम्हाला काही एक दोन तीन वचन मी देतो आणि ते ह्या ह्या संदेशाला ते अगदी म्हणजे घट्ट हे करेल इथं नीतीसूत्र सत्तावीस मध्ये वचन एक उद्याच्या दिवसाविषयी हुशार की मानू नको मला नाही माहिती हो मी असं करणार मी तसं करणार आणि आपल्याला ते दुसरं वचन पण नाव करायला माहितीये की मी ते सगळं विकणार सगळं हे करणार आपण येऊ त्या त्या ह्याच्यात कारण मराठीमध्ये त्याच्यात एक शेवटचं वर शब्द येऊ वापरलेलं आहे तर इथं त्यांनी सावळोमानांनी सांगितलेलं आहे उद्याच्या दिवसाविषयी खुशार की मिरवू नको कारण एक दिवस काय प्रसवेले तुला ठाक नाही आपल्याला माहित नाही आपण का संकटातनं जाय कशातनं जाऊ कशातनं काय करू ते नाही म्हणून देवाच्या बरोबर आपण सारखं राहायला पाहिजे त्याच्या सानिध्यामध्ये त्याच्या 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 हाताखाली त्याच्या कवरिंगमध्ये आपण सारखं असेल किंवा त्याच्या आत्म्यामध्ये वाढत 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 राहील किंवा त्याच्या समवेत राहील म्हणून आपण नेहमी प्रार्थना करतो की परमेश्वरा तुझी समक्षता माझ्या बरोबर असेल तुझी नेहमी माझ्या बरोबर समक्ष असू दे आणि त्याच्यासाठी आपल्याला फार महत्वाचं आहे कारण उद्या काय होणार आहे आपल्याला माहित नाही आपण काय भविष्य करते ना आहोत पण आपण सर्व काही करू पण सगळं आपल्याला शेवटी इथंच ठेवून जायचं हे आपल्याला लक्षात येते ना खूप काही करू शकतो पण सगळं शेवटी इथंच ठेवणार आहे तर दुसऱ्याने तुझी स्तुती करा आपण स्वतः स्तुती नाही करायला पाहिजे हे एक लक्षात ठेवा हे वचन हे आज संदेश खूप चांगला महत्वाचा आहे 
विचार कर पर तुझी स्तुति करावी तुझा पोटा ने कर गोषी फार महत्व नंतर दुसरा मुद्दा संगित कि खूब वे थाम मी पूर्वी आम ज्यादा यंग हो लहान हो इतक नॉलेज नौत फम आई वड़ील आम चर्च मध्य घेन जाए ओढ़ जाए नहीं पी जाए तो मना अस का कभी तक्रार नहीं आता की मुल ती न सगना वे वातावरण जे कभी हो आज पास तैयार कर बारावाद्या एक वचन जो अपने द्रव्य साठन तो देवा विषयी धनवान नहीं देवा विषय तो धनवान नहीं आत्म धनवान नहीं वचना धनवान नहीं कुछ तो धनवान नहीं अपने ते नको अपन अगोदर धनवान हो निराश हो वचन सहा तो मेरा उत्तर तुम नहीं तो मला उत्तर वचन ते मनते तर जो अपने मदद कर कार्य करते महत्व है कि ऊट काम कर शास्त्र तुला आज्ञा के सर्व प्रमाण जपून कर बलवान फार धैर्यवान हो Let us become strong. बलवान हो धैर्यवान हो छोटा छोटा गोष्टी सा सर्व सोड़ ओ मैं मैं इतक कष्ट मैं एवड वर्ष काम के मिला कर आज जर तुम्हें बगित महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट मध्य चाल सो प्रकार चाल सत्ता पाजे सर्ची पाजे 
सगळ्यांना तेच पाहिजे पण नाही आपण निराश होता कामाने पण आपण परमेश्वरामध्ये सतत कार्य करायला पाहिजे धैर्यवान हो त्यापासून उजवीकडे आणि डावीकडे कुठेही वळू नको माझा ध्येय परमेश्वर आहे माझा ध्येय राज्यात जाण्यासाठी माझा ध्येय येशू ख्रिस्तावर आहे आणि मी उजवीकडे वळणार नाही मी डावीकडे वळणार नाही कुठेही वळणार नाही पण तुम्ही ते ध्येय पूर्ण करणार आणि मला माहिती आहे परमेश्वर मला या सर्व याच्यात तो शक्ती देईल आणि हे मंडळ आपल्या आपल्यासाठी प्रत्येकासाठी याच्यावर प्रार्थना करत असते आणि आपल्याला माहिती की देव आपल्याला नेहमी याच्यावर हे उत्तेजन देत असतो आणि याच्यावर आपण विश्वास ठेवूया आणि आपल्याला माहिती आहे की परमेश्वर आपल्याला नेहमी आशीर्वादित करेल तर आपल्याला खरोखर परमेश्वर आणि फार सुंदर असा हात आढा दिलेला आपण याच्यावर अजून खूप काही बोलण्यासारखं आहे आपण त्याच्यावर मनन करूया आणि